Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, back for another lighting video. <laughs> I'm gonna put this LED strip on today. It's uh, sequential, so it starts in the middle and shoots out light both ways when you first start it and stays lit up while driving. Just really a decorative thing and enhances your frontal visibility to other bad drivers. So um, the idea, normally the people are putting it right along the front end of the hood here, and um, like you see in the photo, but I'm gonna try to run it from here all the way across there, and then I got a 47 incher to run down here, but it hasn't got here yet. So um, I went with Silver Holder brand because I've had it before. It does have a six month warranty. There's a lot of brands out there and for less money, but some of my, I've actually got a couple and checked them out. The LEDs were too far apart. They weren't bright, you know, so spend a few extra bucks. I'm not swearing by this brand and I'm not funded by them, but I, I have personally found that they are brighter and last a little longer. So we're gonna get started with this. Also, I'm gonna take the grill out um, so I can wire it in properly. And um, I just think the grill looks like quite a challenge. So I wanna show you guys how to do it properly and hopefully without breaking anything. Okay, first step, you have 10 of these pop-ups to get out of there. I usually just start it with a screwdriver just to get the ball rolling with it. And then you can use a tool, 10 of them, keep them. There's tools like this. They can use as well. I just found getting in the slot it's easier with the screwdriver initially. So keep those where you will not lose them. Then T15 for your hood latch. There's some guys say don't take it off and you can just manipulate this up and twist it and all, but I think you're going to end up breaking it. So I got these loose already just for convenience sake. So take those off, pull that off, then this after you've removed your 10 that you put in a jar or something so you don't lose them, just pull this baby off and put it to the side. It's that quick and easy. Put your latch back on. If you guys have seen my other videos, you know what I'm talking about. Just put it on just in case. If you ever have to shut the hood, pretty tough to open. So now we're ready for grill removal. And um, I watched a couple YouTube videos and got some pointers on it. So we'll see how it goes. So now you're gonna have these bolts here in the black part of the top grill. So I believe there's just four of them. So 10 millimeter, so 10 millimeter and T15. Remember that. If you're on a deserted island, you want a 10 millimeter and a T15. Because it works for everything. So let's get those babies loose. All right, so what I've seen is first of all, you want to pop this top loose a little bit, such as, and I got about 15 different tools here to use of these. Uh, interior removal tools. Um, but it looks like there's some on the outside edge here, so I wanna pop those loose as well, rather than just pulling like some of the guys have done, because I don't wanna break anything. So if you just see how this came up a little bit and forward, so we'll do that all the way along, just to give it a little head start. So we'll just see how it just kinda of moves forward a little bit. That's all we're going for right now. You can hear they're kind of out of the tabs, right there. So now, here, these are plastic. So I'm gonna to try to gently pry on these and see what, what happens there. If I can get these to come loose first, that'll be great. And then I'll um, go from there. Now I do have a clear wrap on all mine, guys. So if you don't, maybe put a blue tape on there or something. So, but I know there's a clip there and a clip there. So I'm gonna get those loose before I go any further. So we'll just see how it goes. Take it gently, be careful. So for this bottom one, guys, I pried here in the top and then right here at the bottom and it popped loose. So it doesn't sound good when it happens. So we'll see, hopefully I'm not the one guy who's messing it up worse than the others. So we got the top loose and the bottom loose. Now we're gonna jump over to the other side. It's just that sounds what you're looking for. Okay, and then should be another one here, just like that. So then we'll go to the bottom. There you go. Okay, and then, prying from the top, we'll see how we do here. So let's go in the back here and pry straight out. Some guys are just yanking it, and they say, don't be afraid to give it a firm yank, but man, I'm still afraid to do that. We'll see though what happens. There we go. So, I may not have to go any further than this to do the wiring I want to do, so I'm going to take a quick peek and we'll take it from there. But you can see I got a pretty good gap here. Um, 
and I'm going to see if I can run the wires right up through here when I do the job. All right, we'll see what we got in the package here. Just what we suspected, one long tube of LED stuff. So a couple things we're going to do, um, test it before we install it, and then I think we'll, um, these are inherently weak, known for letting moisture in on these ends. You know, it doesn't look like it would. Moisture could get in there and then short out the whole thing. So we're gonna put a little bit of my um, super duper glue or caulking, whatever you guys wanna use, but I would seal that up all the way around. And um, it looks sealed, but you can see they put some sealant on it, but we're gonna try it and make it a little better just so we don't have to screw around with this anymore. So that'll be our first step after we test it. So just to test it, all we're gonna do is touch the uh, positive or negative leads to the battery. Just make sure it lights up. There's red, it's positive, black's negative. We'll just throw it on this bolt here for now. And a positive. And you can see, ready? So it seems pretty cool. So I think we'll seal those ends up, let it dry for like five minutes, and then I'll take it from there. Okay. So we sealed up these ends, both ends, and let it set for about an hour. Just took the dog for a bike ride. So now um, I'm going to run my wires up through there so I can put the grill back in place before I stick it on there. Because otherwise I'm going to end up putting this in a too tight of a channel for the grill to go back in place underneath the headlight here. So, or actually under here. So that's what we're going to do. So I'll unravel all this mess and we'll figure out our wiring. All right, guys, so we're going to run the wiring back through here to the end of this light. Then we're gonna run back through the channel, okay? We had something like this on here before, and we know the wiring was gonna be an issue as far as hiding it. So that's why we're gonna do it this way, through the grill, and then back up behind. So pull all the excess up first. And like I say, we'll tuck it into this channel and run it across, then up through here. So go up back behind these clips. And we're going to run through here. And um, this will give us an uh, opportunity, because <coughs> I have some conduit to put this one in for the Raptor lights. So we're going to put everything in the same conduit when we get them through there. Okay, so we got everything fed through there. And let's hold it in position after we put the conduit on it. And you can see we've got plenty. We'll tap into this existing ground with this. And I think we'll actually tap into the existing power for the Raptor light so it all comes on together at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and put the grill back in place and um, then we'll wire the baby up. Okay, so we got the grill back in place. We got the wires pulled up here. Um, so we're gonna test it before we attach it again, just because obviously we don't wanna do a bunch of stuff and then not have it work. So here we go, putting some power to it. Okay, that looks good. All right, we'll go ahead and attach it. Okay guys, so with your razor knife, just cut a little slit here near the end. Because you remember you sealed all this, so you don't want to expose that and cut through it. So then you can just get it started. And the trick on these is just take a little bit, do a little bit at a time. Otherwise you end up with this big sticky mess going all over the place. So then use your Bond 527, no affiliation. <laughs> and put a little bit here and there as you go. Because this isn't real 3M stuff, so it's not going to last you the way you'd like it to. And when you get to the end of that, just peel back another foot or so. Get it up in there nice and tight. Then guys, we're gonna use these type of connectors. Um, I'll link these in the description. They're super awesome for um, doing wire taps for power or for ground. I mean, I've never used anything quite as awesome as these, so I think you guys will like them as well. But they're a real time saver. So this end, 
you put on the side you want to tap. So what we're gonna do is go on to our existing power, which is for our Raptor lights. You can see we got one going to ground already here. So we're gonna slip that over our power. Then the sharp end, you screw right into it. And undo this end. Now that where we want the power to go to next, we just give ourselves, they say a half inch. So we'll strip a half inch of that or so. It's probably pretty close really. And stick it right in the end here. So you can see it sticking through like that. Okay, then just put it in next to the positive lead that you got in there and screw it together, just like this. Okay, so now we should have hot to our new lights. And we're gonna put all this in our conduit here shortly. But anyway, we also want to tap our ground to the same type of connector. They say with this size wire, you can tap up to five items into each one. So we're gonna unscrew our ground that we have going over here. And then we're going to strip our, again, our half inch off here. Give it a little twist. Stick it in the end again with this other one. Actually, I might just twist them together a little just for easiness for me. Stick it in there. And then screw it together. Okay, so now when we go and turn on our lights, we should have everything light up at once. The Raptor lights and our new silver light. So if you guys watch this real quick, hopefully it'll work because I'm going to test fire it. So remember it's daylight, so I did have to cover up my light sensor on the hood, I mean on the dash. So if you do test fire yours, make sure you do that or if it's not going to work in the daytime. There you go. I think it looks pretty good. Anyway, um, now we're going to jump in here real quick and just put our pieces back together. Okay, so this part was pretty important, guys. Um, when you go to put your grill back in, these outside two pieces on each side, you can look down in there and try to get the pins lined up first and just push them in place, okay, before you snap the center in. You'll hear them snap in. And they were a little bit difficult to line up, to be honest with you, it'd be good if you had a helper. Same thing on this side, get the outsides lined up and snap them in place and then come to your center and push those in you'll hear them snap then snap your top in you can see it has a little bit but those snapped in place you can hear everything snapping so make sure you get that it again is a little frustrating you may bend those pins over good luck to you it's just what everybody gets so that's why body shops have boxes of those pins laying around so anyway now we're going to put our grill bolts back in there's 10 millimeters there's four of those Okay, so once you get those all run down, just give them a little snug, but don't snug any one of them down in particular before the others, if you know what I'm saying. You don't want to torque them till the end. So there you go. Now we're going to take the center latch back off with your T15. I just put them in there finger tight, so I won't need that just yet. Then set your intake tray back in place. And over here, what I did is just run the wires through it. Again, I'm gonna put the conduit on those, but I'm gonna add one more lighting thing before I finish that all up. Okay, so then slide your latch back on and put your screws back in place, of course. Okay, after you tighten these up with your T15, then we're gonna go back to putting these 10 of these back in. So have this pulled down, this part of it, when you first put it in, okay? And of course, you gotta line it up. My intake um, isn't quite working with me just yet. So here we go, got this one's lined up, put it in place, then tap it down in there. So put all 10 of those back in the same way. And then you're good to go, guys. So 
Like and subscribe. I need some likes, guys. Plus, I'll get my boy doing some work here mm -hmm. one of these days. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Thanks, guys.